Live from Tucson and a nondescript location in Northern California, you are listening to a still nameless podcast. I'm Josh Kahn here with Arizona basketball studs, Kirk Risa and Pella Larson. How are you boys? Feeling great. Uh, just coming off uh, the win, so yeah. Yeah, uh, hello from my part too, and uh, <laughs> yeah, feeling good. Good, good win. Yeah, today we are remote. Going forward, we're going to be recording on camera, live in person. But uh, we've been dark for a couple days and had to give you guys the content you deserve. Uh, so we're recording this right after uh, another big win uh, against Cal. So it's late at night, 1 a.m. For, <laughs> for the boys right now. Uh, but thank you guys dedication, all for listening. Dedication, dedication, you yeah. see? Oh, Pass yeah. First. <laughs> thank you guys for listening. We are <laughs> Play with pace. Play with pace. <laughs> we're live on spotify apple music and this one might be on youtube we'll see uh if you're enjoying the episode so far leave us a, re a review leave a comment hit up our socials in the episode description because uh, we love to to hear from you guys so uh let's kick it off with tonight uh you Kerr, are four and oh against cal pella you're four and one thanks to the little uh utah Lost freshman year. That's okay. But still, I'm just curious. Happens. Do you guys feel bad for a program like Cal that's, like, struggling so much the last couple of years? I mean, listen, I'm not going to lie. Uh, I think that they kind of have talent all the time. I mean, it's not like, you know, Cal, playing Cal is not easy because, you know, their staff really sets, sets them up, play hard. So, you know, you can't really sleepwalk into these games and have, like, low-energy games because, you know, they're going to play hard no matter what, and they don't really care if, it, if they're down 15 or 20. They're going to keep coming. And I think that's why it's pretty, like, hard to play Cal. I wouldn't really judge, like, you judge them, but, uh, you know, that's my perspective. I don't know. I mean, yeah, he can't really talk because he has a loss. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, no, you don't feel bad because... At the end of the day, you're winning. <laughs> no, but uh, I mean, he, yeah, you're right. No, three, no, three no, international you starters. Like, you can't too feel on bad there. over a win. You have to feel a little yeah, bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's no, no, no. We put the work in, so we we deserve the win, and uh, that's just how it goes. Someone has to lose. Facts. Very I like politician that. answer right there <laughs> for you, Josh. <laughs> yeah, we're still working on media training. That's all it is. So today no, on the yeah. broadcast, that's amazing. you guys haven't had a, a chance to uh, hear anything that the you know, commentators have said yet. But before the game, they go, defense is important, but it's all offense for Arizona. Uh, since the Oregon game, I don't know if you guys know this, but you are number two in the country in defensive efficiency right now. What has changed, if anything, since that game? Uh, we just, I think we've just been talking about it a lot more, uh, especially the rebounding and just the effort. And also, like, guys have been locking in to the scout like crazy. And uh, not that we wasn't doing that, but, like, uh, end of the year, things kind of change, things get more serious. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, I think uh, I have to agree. Uh, I mean, after Oregon game, actually, in the locker room, right after we lost and coaches came in, you know, we had, like, a... Uh, or like a real man up talk with everybody you know what we what we expect from everybody what we need and uh, i think that's a that's a good sign of a good team who you know everybody says what they think what we need better and that obviously defense was one of one of the one of the things that came up in that little five minute meeting that we had you know after the game and ever since you know we never looked back and uh, i think people take it more as a pride uh, you know and i think i think we have individual defenders as good as anybody in the country so might as well just play like awesome defense might as well play awesome defense that's a quote a a that's a quote for instagram right there um so like it's funny how it comes from me too right <laughs> <laughs> the biggest defender out there <laughs> hey everybody's playing their part we see it we see it but with like these uh yeah these narratives that aren't necessarily true about you guys there's a ton of that stuff going around around like the Pac-12 and we could talk about how like a lot of the 
national journalists are all East Coast guys, but uh, there is some merit, I guess, to how top-heavy the league can look at times, at least. Um, I know Kerr has commented on UCLA and USC leaving uh, the Pac-12, uh, but do you guys get ever get caught up in the idea of like what that shift for the Pac-12 might be? New teams coming in, those teams leaving? Because it might affect you guys in the short term. So I'm curious. I honestly haven't really thought that much of it. Uh, I mean, when the time comes, we'll deal with it. But yeah, it's, I mean, when I saw it happen at first, I was like, I was kind of shocked and, you know, a little bit sad because uh, you love competing against those guys. And uh, yeah, just, it's kind of like unsure future. It's a little bit unsettling, but yeah. Yeah, I uh, know, I agree because I feel like the the culture that Pac-12 has built with all this, you know, LA schools, Arizona schools, mostly, you know, U of A, uh, you know, Oregon, like, I feel like it's very, like, it's very, like, cultural. And the fact that, like, two big schools are leaving, uh, it makes me sad, too, even though it might not even affect me, but just for the future, for, for the program, for U of A, for Pac-12, you know. But, yeah. Yeah. What do you think? You think it's shitty, shitty of them? Do I think it's uh, shitty? Yeah, I think it's shitty. I think uh, the Pac-12 gets way too much hate. I think the Big Ten is way overrated. Uh, yeah. I think – I'm curious. You're, I know you're not going to answer – give me the answer that I want. Well, maybe you will. Do you guys think you would win the Big Ten this year? You know what? I'm not going to be like, you know – Hunter Dickinson, who said before the ASU game that we're going to beat them by 20 and then you lose by 20. So I'm not going to do that because, you know, you might end up with, in the you know, March Madness playing against this team. So you can't really say here. But honestly, I mean, the style is different, you know, and you don't really get the full feel against another team when until you play them. You know, you can watch from TV, but it all might be a little fluff. So you don't really know. Mm hmm. Do you guys want a little uh, Big Ten fun fact right now? Go ahead, yeah. I don't. Yes. I do. All right, all right. The Pac-12 so over excited. the last... <laughs> that is, is so it excited. To, it has to be good. It has to be good. If it's some pointless, the Josh, we're going to put leave. And you know what? No, you no, can no, crop no, no, it no, later. No, no. Pac-12, last three years, 13-7 and seven against the Big Ten. Pac-12 in March Madness over the last two years, 18 and 8, Big 12, 16 and 17. And you guys, personally, as you know, three Big Ten games, three dubs. Two of them were top 15 at the time. I don't know. I don't know. Wait, this Indiana, <laughs> Illinois. Wait, who is in Big yeah, Ten? It's Indiana, Purdue. Oh. All right, Indiana. Who else we beat from there then? Illinois and Michigan. Oh, right. Uh, right. Um, I mean, these are good facts. These are these are facts this that is, should be, This is why I'm yeah. here. I actually like those facts. That This was good ones, Josh. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if, if you look uh, at the, that way, then bring... you can say it's a little bit underrated for sure. Because I feel like, I low-key feel like uh, ever since I got to States, pac 12s ever since kind of being like, People talk like more down on it than up. And I thought that, you know, I came to one of the best conference in, in states and I still believe that way because, you know, we have good teams. We have usually every year three, four teams are ranked. I mean, you know, it's a power five conference. So fuck these haters. <laughs> <laughs> Buckle. That might get cut out. <laughs> um. So the talk, I guess, Big Ten and Big 12 right now is um, probably not for you guys, but for everybody else is about Zach Eady and Zoo after last week's 40 ball. Um, Man, of course, he's been ain't nobody talking about Zoo. killing it. You know that nobody's <laughs> talking about nah, Zoo. They, gotta they, put put a gra on they, put a, they put a graphic up today. They put a graphic no, up. Who? Zach Eady versus Azulus Tubelis. Pac-12 Network. Oh, Pac-12 Network bias. did, but not ESPN, right? Or not like this Fox or whoever are in the other other coast. 
I think you're going to get uh, Jeff Goodman talking about it a little <laughs> bit more if you keep tweeting at him. Yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, we actually had a great discussion with Jeff afterwards, too. He's a great guy. He's, you know, I know people are kind of mad at him sometimes because he probably doesn't praise us as much. But, like, man, he's just trying to do his job and, you know, you know, got to respect him. U of A alumni, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Should we talk about Jeff real quick? I have some stuff to I talk have some about. Spoiler. A, Should a I little say bit spoiler or no? Go for it. I don't know how should I say it. Let it rip. Just say it. I mean, don't mean don't beat around the bush. Just around the bush. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm <laughs> very interesting. <laughs> but uh, I mean, yeah, we might we might see Jeff here and there in next couple of weeks. You know, we we came to a great agreement. You know, so so we probably have a, gonna have a great podcast with him too. This is breaking news for <laughs> somebody on the podcast. I mean, let's not act like so Jeff is now like LeBron James. Or something. <laughs> He's just a solid guy who's doing a solid job, and we're going to have him on the show. Yeah, we would love to have him, yeah. So shout out to Jeff Goodman. Shout out to Field of 68, which the mm -hmm. other night they had their show with uh, Tyler Hansborough, who a lot of people think is the best college basketball player of, like, the 2000s. Um and he gave a, a, a little shout out. I don't know if it was good or if it was bad uh, and pointed out Kerr specifically uh, talking about players having podcasts and why it's a bad idea. And uh, Jeff didn't necessarily All right, listen, disagree Tyler with Tyler doesn't that. know nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler used to play a long time ago, probably, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago <laughs> when podcasts weren't even allowed. So come on now. <laughs> We're good. We're good. All right. What did he, what did he have to say, though? Uh, you can he say some bad saying... stuff in podcasts that you don't mean to. <laughs> exactly. You already know. You already know. And No, I mean, people, I would uh, assume because, you know, that's what people think. People know who you are. They believe in Pella. They, they, they think Pella is going to, you know, be a stand-up guy on the podcast. And I think they're scared of you. I think they're scared of you, Kerr. Man. Next. <laughs> <laughs> He also <laughs> pointed out Hunter Dickinson and his podcast, um, I mean, which brings me to a quick point. Um, so if anybody's here only listening for Kerr and Pella, I imagine 100% of you probably are. I would say to skip <laughs> ahead. Like, Is that the point, like Josh, where you have to be like, oh, no, they want to listen to you too? <laughs> well, this is going to be bad. This is going to be a rough <laughs> one. Uh, this, this, this is going to be a new segment. Uh called oh, yeah. Twitter, ex Twitter Expert of the Week. Um, mm -hmm. We talked about Twitter Experts last week. Um, they've really come out of the woodworks online, but one in particular has really uh, showed himself. And this is where I get to start beef. You guys are stand-up guys. You don't have to deal with this BS, but, but I am petty. I see everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, speaking of Hunter Dickinson, uh, he was associated with a man named Jeff Nadu, formerly of the Barstool Sports Round Ball podcast, which is hosted by Hunter and Jordan Bohannon, who was on Iowa, uh, now in the G League. Uh, shout out to those guys. They're crushing it, mm -hmm. killing it on and off the court. Um, and shout out to them for not working with Jeff anymore, who might be the most negative human on earth. Uh, he is a so-called betting expert. And last Thursday, went on his other little Barstool show, went on about how Oregon was going to win the game, uh, gave him out as a betting pick, saying, you guys were phony, they can't win. And we see how that turned out. Before I get to the response, uh, again, this is just me saying this. This is not the whole podcast saying this. Um, but I will stoop down to this level. You bet against Arizona, gave it out publicly, bit you in the ass. And what was the grown man response? This is a grown-ass man. Oh, I goes that. online and says, quote, Kerr Creasa is a little whiny bitch. Uh, and if you go back a little bit further, <laughs> you will find plenty of Kerr and Arizona content. Just absolute hate. So much hate. So I, I just wanted it. to address this real quick. Tell me what you think, Bella. I mean, I guess it just sounds like man's got his feelings hurt to me. Like... <laughs> Uh, putting himself out there publicly, publicly about betting and stuff—it's—it's it's gonna bite you in the ass. 
That's what I think. Yeah, man. Snitches get stitches. <laughs> <laughs> is that not the same? <laughs> is that no? Is that? I mean, it is a same. No, yeah. I know. It's a same. Is that a wrong context right now? Uh, uh, yeah, probably. I mean, you know, man. I don't know. Twitter is such a toxic place. It's actually yeah. hilarious, anyways. So, you know, it's crazy. Yeah, we. Like, we leave. I, no, you go ahead. <laughs> I was gonna say, I'm not a very good basketball player, but I know better than to go online and talk shit about college kids. Uh, no, I mean that, that's, that's we already went through it, but it's funny because that's how they are. And then you know what's the best part? They're sitting on a couch and then they have a bag of chips. <laughs> it's like a meme. Have you seen the meme? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there's there's like funny meme how like you know little bit bigger person is eating chips on a couch, and then he's watching mm-hmm. games and then somebody missed, and then the dude with the chips starts laughing. He's saying, "Huh, he sucks." Yeah, I mean it, it's it's exactly what happens when we when we we're at home watching any other sport I mean, that than is basketball. True. Like if you'd see us watch football, it, it's we're doing the exact yeah, same. Yeah, we thing. are experts. And we are actually experts in uh, American football, though. But uh, <laughs> but the difference is we don't tweet it out. Yeah. You yeah, know, we're just discussing it's... like two grown men, you know? <laughs> like, I don't go on Twitter. Like, I, I don't have to say, like, Mahomes knows himself that it, that was a bad, like, fumble, you know? Yeah. Or something like mm. that. Like, I don't go on Twitter and I don't need to say, like, yo. Yeah. That was our expert of the week. Uh, I, I hope he feels really good about himself. I will make sure this finds its way over to him. Uh, hopefully he'll respond. He deleted some <laughs> comments on Twitter, on our social media. Uh, I, I, <laughs> I, I think we should also mention that he said Arizona can't shoot, and you guys are shooting like over forty percent for the last I don't know three weeks. No, whatever. Let, like let's leave three. it. We can't shoot. <laughs> he, he will Fair hopefully enough. he will get a coaching job sometime somewhere. <laughs> he he knows the scouting so good. Like we can't shoot. All right, next. <laughs> like you know. Let's reach into the mailbag a little bit. We asked for questions last time. And, of course, we're always looking uh, for more from you fans of of what you want to know about Curran Pella. The number one question uh, was, and it was usually phrased in this way, but we'll give credit to Claire Cox, who asked it first. She wants to know, WTF are your majors? WTF. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Wait, is that a major question right now? Uh, major? I can, I can uh, probably... <laughs> Wait, actually, I actually asked. Uh, I know mine too. All right, I'm majoring in uh, public and applied humanities uh, with emphasis in business. And also I have... Uh, Dude, uh, that was my major. Yeah, and then I'm minoring in uh, sports management. Wait, should no I, way. Um, should I leave? <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> All right, Kurt, what you got? So what I am studying is inter di- dis- interdisciplinary studies. It's it's very hard. I so know. Don't worry like, about uh, it. I know it sounds hard. Everything is hard about it. Every class. Don't you worry. have every major. Say what? You have like every major. No, I heard in Maui you were pursuing nursing, right? Yeah, that's the thing. Like I kind of... I like to switch it up a lot because I'm very like flexible and I like to study different things. So, you know, in Maui, I actually did say it depends on the week. So that's really my honest. What was your major again? (laughs) Wait, Uh, interdisciplinary studies. Next. (laughs) Okay. Another question from, uh, there's a lot of people in the, the frats and the uh, sororities out there. Uh, Jojo was wondering what you guys knew about Greek life before coming to college. Mm, not much, honestly. Like, we don't have any type of frats, sororities, nothing like that back home. Uh, people actually study in universities. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's the priority. Yeah, but I guess, like, just watching college movies that's that's all i knew and turned out uh to be kind of similar i guess yeah yeah i mean i didn't know either and even like when you watch the american movies you you don't kind of get the same feeling what it is really about like you know it's uh, like some brotherhood or whatever 
but yeah, like when I came down to campus, actually Coach Murph took me, you know, kind of first or second thing. He just throw me by, by the Greek, uh, Greek row. And uh, my question to Murph was like, <laughs> what do you think? Wait, what do you mean all these people like just party? Like they just pay money and then they just like party? So like first two months, it was still kind of complicated for me to understand like what are they for? But I think it's super fun and it makes college experience way better for, for everybody. I should also add that we've had quite a few people wondering if you guys are interested in taking them to their sorority date dashes and formals. Not going to give any free clout and shout them out. Uh, that might be an off-air conversation. Uh, <laughs> All right, so as of now... <laughs> Tell them. As of now, we, we don't do formals. I'm sorry, we don't do date dashes. We're at, we have a very busy schedule, and basketball is uh, number one uh, priority. Uh, I would have to agree on that one. <laughs> you sound like uh, hired entertainment, like you're doing birthday parties. I mean, I mean, nice. I mean formals are kind of crazy. I don't know. I've been actually, I've been to one. I was, I was my teammates plus one on a formal. Can you imagine? <laughs> uh, so this girl took her teammate, and, and her teammate decided he had a plus one, so he just brought her. Yeah. So basically, my teammates say, "I'm only going if I gain plus one." All right, all right sure. And uh, I think it was, uh, I don't know, uh, um, a little bit awkward, I would say. I mean, not for me. I don't, I don't really, I wouldn't really uh, go there a lot. So, yeah. Have you guys have any, uh, had any weird experiences at the frats? Do you go to frats? <laughs> oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm just oh, saying, I tried acting, that, I'm I tried saying, acting like, out so cool. It's I'm, like, I'm just saying like how much we should talk about it. But uh, yeah, there's been uh, there's been weird ex there's been a weird experience. Uh, just a lot of different personalities, and uh, some uh, some uh, decide that that night they don't want to behave. So uh, yeah. there's been a few ups and downs. Yeah, yeah. People are different, man. People are different. <laughs> right, another question. <laughs> another question. Oh, this one is uh this one comes from Josh Khan. Uh he wants to know uh Kerr, uh what what the fuck are you talking about all game? Uh I saw you talking to Joel Brown. I saw you talking to the refs. Literally the entire game you're talking. What are you saying? Well, Brown is my guy first of all. I really, you know, He's a cool dude, you know, like you said, I played against him already four times, you know, uh, great guy. And refs, I feel like, I like talking with refs, but I feel like that's kind of also more European thing. No, Kerr just gets bored during the games. <laughs> he, no. he wants to find any type of way, any little <laughs> argument. Sometimes I'll, I'll be walking up to the refs and Kerr, they're arguing about nothing. Like, they're just... And I think they like it too, because they just want to like talk to him and see what's up. But some, I mean, yeah. I mean, I think it's fun. Yeah. Like you know, yeah. just to you know, you've been already like that's what I'm saying. Like we're kind of getting old already. Like you've <laughs> been around the league. Like you know the refs by faces, by names. No, uh, refs are refs are cool. I love refs. Uh, all right. One more question that we got from the mailbag. Uh, I'm curious about this too. What music are you guys listening to pre-game? Go ahead, you go first. So, my kind of artists are like Rod Wave. Um, kind of, I would say like more sad music for classical American. But like for me, I don't, I don't listen like I don't take it as a sad song because I don't, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not getting that deep with the lyrics. I just think it's a great song. I think they're like, like it's cool vibe. And actually, it's funny because I actually, before the game, I, I sent, uh, you know, the song Girls Love, uh, Girls Love Rod Wave. Anyways, if you don't know, listen to it. I think it's a great song. And then the response, what I asked, asked from my friend was like, yeah, I like it, but it's kind of like sad. And I never really even thought that, that way that it could be a sad, sad song. So, you know, it's just funny for me. 
Yeah, I'm not a actually I'm not a, like a big pregame music guy. Like uh you rarely catch me on with like headphones before the game. I might just like play one song and then when I'm walking into the arena uh <laughs> today was actually the 8 mile uh, intro Eminem. Oh. <laughs> You already knew it was so, over yeah, for Cal then. You already knew Cal it was up, in uh, trouble. up for some trouble, yeah. <laughs> but nah, usually I just like see what you know, talk to talk to the guys or listen to whatever's on, on the in the arena, yeah. Did you guys get any suggestions for the podcast names? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh so before we are before we do actually wrap this up, we mentioned it last episode. We are loving the support for a nameless podcast, but we'd love for it to have a name. Um, we did get some some good ideas, and I know you texted uh, a great one, uh, Pella, which I, I thought was was really good. It was two and a half Europeans, and Briggs seemed uh, fairly on board with two internationals and a ginger. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But I I think. We'll give the uh, the fans one more chance to to throw some stuff over at us, and I'll put a poll up and uh, make sure uh, that we have a name by the the next time we record. Uh, this is big time, guys. This is big. No, time. yeah, it is. And I like how like we're like so family oriented that we speak to our fans and people who you know listen to us before we choose. You know, we're we are making the podcast together as family. Can I just say one suggestion that I got already? <laughs> yeah, go, I want to hear that, please. You might not keep this in, but uh, this is from a girl named Carly. She said, "I would love to for you guys to name the podcast Hoops and Hoes." <laughs> <laughs> I think you should keep. Can we in. start inviting hoes onto the podcast? Oh, oh. that was Woo! that's. I did not say that. That was he Josh. definitely meant that though. <laughs> What is this episode, man? <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a rough edit. It's going to be a rough yeah. edit. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Once again, thank you all for the support. Uh, take some time to follow us on our socials at a nameless pod on Twitter and Instagram. Leave a review on Apple and Spotify. And we would love for you guys to show some love on the YouTube page, uh, which this will be on uh, with a like, a comment with your feedback, maybe even hit that sub button. I don't know. Either way, we will be coming to you all from one place next time, from the Dirty T. Uh, boys, it's been a pleasure tonight. Can't wait. Uh, yeah. Got a whole lot of exciting stuff coming. Stay that's ready. The that's the best part. Contents keep flowing, <laughs> flowing, flowing like a river. Bang, bang, bang. <laughs> bang, bang, bang. All right, everyone. Thanks for listening. Thank you, guys. <laughs>